Hi everybody! I hope that you're safe, well, and ready for part three of the bell jar. I'm so glad that we've still been able to do this group project, even if it is in an online format. This video is a little guide to get you through chapter 14 and the exercises I've provided. You can do these exercises anywhere. You can do them at your desk with your cat, in your kitchen, at the park. Now, since chapter 14 is the first chapter, and it may have been a little bit since you've read last because of spring break or whatever other circumstances have arisen, you know, national crisis, here's a recap. The end of chapter 13, Esther just attempted suicide um, by essentially burying herself in the basement, which will be important as basements continually pop up throughout the rest of the story in uncomfortable situations. I don't know if any of my group mates are going to be talking about that, but it's a good thing to know regardless. Chapter 14 opens up with Esther's very lucid state. Uh, she's being dug out of the ground and we don't really know what's real, not real. She doesn't really even know what's going on. Um, but before I get too deep into it, I'm going to have you complete an activity. On Blackboard, there should be a list of 20 words. Take out a sheet of paper or pull up Microsoft Word, Google Docs, whichever you prefer. For each word, write the first color that pops into your head next to it. Go ahead and pause this video to do so. If we were in class, Sure, you could compare your answers to the person next to you and get some similar answers for some of the words, very different answers for others. What I wanted to accomplish with that activity is basically an exercise in the senses. So authors frequently utilize our associations to combine sensations and morph them into beautiful, unique metaphors and different phrases as a result. There is an actual name for the combination intermixing of different senses, and that's called synesthesia. So it's an actual medical condition that involves, well, it's different for everybody who has it, but it involves the combination of two senses being experienced at the same time. So maybe somebody hears the word classroom and instantly tastes orange juice, or, a lot of people who have this, they associate numbers with colors. It's, again, it's different for everybody, but when a person does have this condition, it is the same for them every single time. I've actually included a video. It's optional, you don't have to watch it, but it is linked in the document. So synesthesia can also be a literary device. We actually touched on this very briefly during, I think, group one's presentation. And basically in doing that, the authors play with the senses like they normally do and for a case like imagery, playing to the five senses. But a lot of times they might be playing to more than one sense at the same time. So maybe combining within a sentence a smell and taste or how the person feels. So paying special attention to the senses. I want you to do a close reading of pages 170 to 172. Start with the first line of chapter 14 and conclude with Esther saying the same. For your Blackboard discussion post, I want you to pull out several words or phrases that relate directly to the senses. Consider questions like, what do they mean? Why are these word choices important? What senses do they appeal to? Describe how sensations interact or how Plath uses figurative language to get her message across. You may also want to consider the roles of light and dark and warmth and coolness. After you've read, spend about five to 10 minutes jotting down words. Don't spend too long on it, just on a side sheet of paper, underlining your book, whatever it may be. And then head to Blackboard for this discussion post. Once you've gotten through all that, you can give yourself a high five and move on to the next section. 